topic questions 1.4. Okay, so these questions are all based on the section of the book on particles and antiparticles. So, question 1. The rest energy of a photon is Down. Rest energy is EO of a photon of a proton, sorry, proton is 1.501 times 10 to the minus 10 joules. And it says to calculate it instead of in joules in MeV, mega electron volts. Okay? So, when we got to convert from energy to electron volts, it, people get very confused by it, but it's totally unnecessary to. You only ever do one of two things. If we know that the charge on an electron is E, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, okay, I can't remember it's in the formula sheet. If we know that the charge of the electron is E, then you either times E or divide by E, depending on which way we're going. So you're only ever doing that, times in by E or dividing by E. Okay? How do I work out which one? Well, I know I want a number in the mega range, kilo, mega, i.e. about a million, so 10 to the 6-ish. Clearly not something that's 10 to the minus ridiculous. So, I'm looking for something 10 to the 6-ish. If I times these two numbers together, I'm going to get my, to the minus 10 times the minus 19. When you times, you add the powers, so I'll end up with minus 29, because plus minus will become a minus, and you end up with minus 29, not what I want. If I divide, then I take away the powers. Minus minus becomes a plus, and I get minus 10 plus 19, so I get plus 9, much more in the ballpark of what we want. So I know I must divide to go this way. Now, theoretically, it's great if you can remember, oh, to go from to, sorry, from joules to MeV, you divide by E, to go from MeV to joules, you times by E. If you can remember that, brilliant. If you can't know and you get to the exam, you think, oh my God, how am I going to work this out? I can't remember how you do it. All you do is, well, I'm only ever going to times or divide by E. Let's look at the powers. If I add the powers, will I get what I want? No. If I take away the powers, will I get what I want? Yes. Take away the powers, I must be dividing. So I'm going to take this 1.501 times 10 to the minus 10 divide by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 and I'll get Let's put it directly in standard form. 9.38 times 10 to the 8, I believe that is, EV. Which means... We can convert that to 938 MeV. Okay, so we get 9.38 times 10 to the 8 EV. We want 10 to the 6 EV because 10 to the 6 is mega. So to, we've got 10 to the 8, we want 10 to the 6. 10 to the 7, 10 to the 
six. We move the decimal place two to the right. This number will go down two, which is what we want. So we get 938 MeV. Okay, the next question. Part B. Show that a photon must have a minimum energy of let's write this down. 1876 MeV to create a proton antiproton pair. So, how do we create a proton antiproton pair? Well, for pair creation, we have a equation which is found on page 11 of the book. Uh, we have Let's put them over here in a box so we can refer back to them. For annihilation, first, I know this isn't what this is, but we may have a question on annihilation come up. So we'll put that down. Annihilation. The minimum energy, which is HF min, is equal to EO. And for pair. The minimum energy is equal to 2 here. And that makes sense because here we're making 2, here we're just annihilating. So, okay. Annihilation will send out particles, photons. that. So energy in, energy out, energy in, energy out. So we only sort of see one side of the equation. But here, photon comes in. We're going to send out two particles. And therefore we need two lots of EO. So, back to our question. This is a question on pair production. So we're going to be using this equation. Move the work up a little bit. <coughs> so, the rest energy of a proton is 9.38 times 10 to the 8 EV or 9.38 MeV but we're trying to write everything in standard form as we write it down. We want to know the minimum energy we want 2 EO so 2 EO is 2 times that which works out at one eight seven six uh, oh, let's put this in standard form so one point eight eight uh, times ten to the nine E V. So you could say that's one point eight G E V. Okay, so that's the minimum energy required okay energy because E equals HF so HF this side of the equation is energy so energy we need 2EO that's 2EO that's equal to energy so minimum energy required to create a proton and antiproton basically two lots of their rest mass okay part two Explain why a photon of energy 2 MeV, so a photon of 2 MeV, could create an electron positron pair and not a proton antiproton pair. Now, the trick to this really is to not think too much about the actual photon itself. What we need to look at is what minimum energies we require. 
Now we know we've ca we've calculated the minimum energy required to make a proton antiproton pair. That's here. Okay, which is more. Already we can see it's more than this. So we know, but you could, if you had this in exam, you wouldn't just point to it. You'd have to write it out again. So we could say for a proton, E, uh, sorry, 2EO is equal to, uh, let's put it all in MeV. So uh, 1, 8, 8, 0, MeV. For an electron, 2EO is equal to, well we need to know the EO of an electron, so the EO of an electron, or the, the frequency of electron, uh, the minimum range, uh, rest energy, that's the word, of the electron is 0.51 MeV, so double that which would be 1.02 MeV. So we can see that 2 MeV is enough for a electron-positron pair. They both have the same rest energy. But not enough, quite considerably not enough, to create a proton-antiproton pair. Okay? Question three. Let's move the work up again. Okay. The rest energy of an electron, which we're given there, is 0.511 MeV. State the minimum energy for each photon created when a positron an electron annihilate each other. So we're now looking at annihilation and it says state the minimum energy of each photon created. Well the minimum energy is equal to the rest energy. So this is the easiest question in the world. HF min is equal to E O, which is equal to 0.511 MeV. That's it. That really is that simple. Because each photon will create a particle, or it is sort of added together and then divided up, but that's the way we look at it. So the minimum energy required is equal to the rest energy, and the rest energy is given to us. So there we go. Simple. Part B is a little bit more tricky though. A positron created in a cloud chamber in an experiment has 0.158 MeV of kinetic energy. It collides with an electron at rest creating two photons of equal energies as a result of the annihilation. So what we're looking at here is we have theoretically an input of a positron with some Ke on the way in colliding with an electron that is sitting at rest. So I've not drawn it coming in, it's just sitting there. And we get the emission of a photon here, an identical photon here. So, what we're looking at is trying to find out, first, part one, the total energy of the input side, of the positron and electron. You can think of this as an input part of and an output part. This section is what we put in and this section is what we take out I'm not including the electron actually 
So, the input side is the positron, the electron, plus this kinetic energy that comes in. If any energy on the input side is important. So the rest energy of the electron, the rest energy of the positron, and the kinetic energy. So, part one, no, part I, sorry. The total energy, we'll give that a capital E, will be equal to the rest energy of the electron, the rest energy of the positron, which is exactly the same, plus the kinetic energy that's put into the system. Okay, so this is theoretically 2EO, and 2EO we calculated up here, which is very handy for us, 1.02 times 10 to the 6. Ke is one, uh, 0 0.158 times 10 to the 6. When we add them together, we get 1.17, uh, 180 roughly when you round it up, times 10 to the 6, so MeV. So the total energy put in, if there was no kinetic energy, it would be 1.02 MeV, but because we carried a little bit of kinetic energy in with a positron, we actually got a slightly bigger number. So the photons that are being emitted will have slightly higher energy. And that's where we go on to the next question, the next part of the question. Show that the energy of each photon is 0 0.590 MeV. Now, the photons are going to take this energy and divide it equally. So this is the pool of energy that's put into the system. They're going to take it out. We're now looking at the output side. So the photon energy is going to be equal to a half E, which is equal to 1.180 divided by 2 MeV, which is equal to 0 0.590. And that's all the equations done for that section. Question 4 is a word uh, explanation of question. We'll quickly go through it. A positron can be produced by a pair production or by positron emission from a proton-rich nucleus. Describe the changes that take place in a proton-rich nucleus when it emits a positron. Well, it's almost answered in itself. It's proton-rich. Part. Uh, an atom is not going to want to stay proton rich, it's going to want to even that out. So, if you're not sure what's going to happen, just think of the fact it's going to want to even it out. It doesn't want to be proton rich. One of the protons is going to decay, it's going to turn into a neutron. And when it turns from a proton to a neutron, that's when the positron is emitted. So, all you've got to think is just general common sense of what we understand about particles. They're not going to want a proton rich nucleus, it's going to turn a proton into a neutron, and that's what's going to happen. And the second question, state two ways in which pair production of a positron and an electron differs from positron emission. So obviously the first thing you can say is that positron emission comes from the decay of a, of a proton into a neutron, whereas pair production takes place when to phot uh, a photon which is significant energy that it um, spontaneously converts itself into a, pro, a particle antiparticle pair. So one is dependent on photons of certain energies, the other one is dependent on the decay of a, pros, of a proton into a neutron. And that's the end of this section.